Hey guys, today we are checking out this. Uh, this is an Android box with integrated dashcam and with wireless CarPlay and Android Auto uh, features. So, this is just an empty box because the device is already installed over here. And um, let me just guide you through what, uh, what was in the box, how the footage from this looks, and then we will talk some details about pros and cons of this solution. So, first of all, you get the device, you get the USB cable, as well as an USB-C adapter, prying tool that will help you with the installation, and a quick user guide, user manual. Let's call it a quick start manual. So, other than that, um, as I uh, already told you, this is an all-in-one device. So we have an Android box over here. We have you have a dash cam, full HD, and it also features a wireless uh, CarPlay and wireless Android Auto adapter. So it's all-in-one in one device with only one USB cable that connects connects to your USB port, and you have all the controls from your factory screen. So it's a very clean installation. On the top over here we have a single USB-C connector, we have a SIM card uh, port over here and a micro SD card port over here as well. On the side there's, an, uh, there's a reset uh, pin I believe, there's a microphone over here and we have some LED indicators over here as well. This is for cooling if I'm uh, not mistaken and at the front we have the full HD um, uh, dash cam, uh, dash cam camera lens. On the box uh, we will also find some technical specification of the internals of this device. So there's a Bluetooth um, and Wi-Fi connection over here. There's a 4G data modem and the CPU is 1.8 gigahertz, I believe. 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. So, as I told you, installation was very easy. All I had to do is stick it over here to the windscreen. Just uh, pick a place that's, uh, that best suits you. I'm uh, using the passenger side because I want to have a clear view in front of, this, um, in front of the driver's uh, seat. And the connection is at the top, so you have to space it out a little bit just to be able to disconnect it if needed. And the shape is uh, rather, uh, rather useful, especially for the sun visor. Yeah, you can see that it will not, uh, it, it will not be in your way if you want to use the sun visor. Uh, although your passenger's view will be something like this. As I said, all the controls are over here on your factory display. So, this is my factory display, I have my factory navigation, I have my factory car settings, I have my radio over here, I have my media player, and in menu I also have Apple CarPlay, which would connect me to my phone if my phone was connected to the USB port, but instead of the phone I have the dashcam connected. This is why I have the dashcam interface available over here. So we can see a live feed from the uh, dashcam. You can go over here and check all the apps that are available. You have YouTube, YouTube Music, Spotify, um, uh, Netflix, and pretty much you are not uh, restricted to the apps that you see over here because you also have a uh, you have access to a Google Play Store. So if there's something on the Google Play Store that you want to install, well, you can just do it. Yeah, this is how. Uh, how it uh, works, but you have to be, of course, signed in. I'm not signed in right now because I'm ready to uh, ready to remove this from the vehicle, actually, but more about this in a minute. So, maybe let me show you some sample footage from the dashcam day and night, and then we will talk pros and cons of this uh, solution, of this device, of this all-in-one dashcam slash Android box slash wireless CarPlay Android Auto adapter.
Okay, so let's start with pros. Uh, it's an all-in-one device with a very easy installation. It's small when it comes to shape and uh, there's a lot, a lot of functionality. And um, well, to be honest, that's pretty much it because cons, well, cons disqualify, disqualify this device uh, as something that I would want to have in my vehicle. So first of all, the boot up speed. Since this is connected to your um, infotainment unit and powered through the USB port, there's a sequence of things that need to happen before this device, this dash cam actually is doing all that you expect from it. So first of all, you get in your vehicle, turn on the ignition, and it will take about 10 or 15 seconds for the infotainment system to start and then when uh, your infotainment system starts it will boot up the dash cam it will boot up in about 20 seconds or so and that's uh, if the connection between your system and the dash cam is okay so we have a total of 35 seconds right now and on top of that when the android system in this device boots up there's an separate application responsible for the video recording which still needs to be uh, started so let's say another 15 seconds before the video recording is uh, on so we have a total of 50 seconds yeah if i'm uh, correct 50 seconds which can be a little too long for some uh, use cases so like in my case where my office is very close to a nearby library, which I often visit. And if I travel from my office to the library or back, it takes about one minute. Yeah, I could walk this distance, but for some reason I'm using my vehicle. And uh, this in this one minute trip where I have one intersection, I have two, uh, um, uh, two uh, schools that I need to uh, pass by. And there, there are a lot of things that could happen uh, on that short trip, which I want to record. And I don't have a chance to do this because uh, when I leave office and when I get to the library, the video is not even started to be recorded because this device still is preparing for the uh, recording. Yeah, my trip from my office to the library is quicker than this device so let's take a look at the video quality maybe okay if you play something you can see that first seconds there's nothing going on it looks like the playback is freezing but actually it's not nine seconds of nothing and only then the video starts yeah so there's a lot of uh, footage that was never captured for some reason also you can notice the video quality you have low frame rate you have a lot of noise over here in low light condition but this is not um, low light condition specific uh, the bit rate is so low that if you travel um, with a certain speed or there's a lot of uh, things happening in front of the vehicle there are traffic signs uh, you are uh, going through the woods and there's a lot of sun and shadows and the uh, scenery changes a lot this bitrate that's forced over here is too low to capture all those things with the uh, required details so details so there's a lot of glitch um, glitching on the on the footage which makes uh, makes it pretty much useless as i said before there there's no button over here and i would like to have just one to mark the footage as an emergency video to save the video that is currently recorded so let's say that i'm using google maps i'm driving down the road and something happens i want to save the file for future uh, uh, evidence for example yeah so what i need to do is go over here and press i believe this yeah and this is if i'm using uh, this is if i'm using maps over here if i'm using radio i need to go here here and uh, press over here yeah to go to the load key and over here find the button to save the video so for 
uh, at least for um, uh, press uh, for touches of the display before I'm able to save the video and this is while I'm driving and I need to use touch display to do this also, I mentioned before that there's a single USB cable both for power and uh, communication with the vehicle. And, well, there's no parking mode in this dash cam because of that. Yeah, because as soon as I turn off my infotainment system, this will happen as soon as I um, uh, turn off the ignition, power is cut from this and this device is off. There's no way of recording anything in the parking mode. If you were wondering if the memory card over here is optional, well, you don't get it in the box. You will have to provide one and you will have to provide it because the uh, the dashcam application over here will not use the internal memory. There's 64 gigs of internal memory in this device, but dashcam app cannot use it. You will have to provide a third party external SD card over here. Uh, so the internal memory is pretty much wasted and you are still forced to uh, provide an external memory card. Oh, another thing when it comes to the interface. So this is cool that uh, you can use your OEM display. Yeah, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much very cool. Yeah, it's even responsive, but let's say that you don't have Golf Mark 7 like me. Let's say that you have Audi A3 with MMI system. The display is over here. You have a control knob over here, but the display is not a touch display. Yeah, so you cannot do this. You are restricted to the control wheel. You can only do this. Yeah, you can browse right, left, and you can uh, confirm with press of a button. So let's say you want to save an emergency footage. You go over here and well that's it you cannot do anything right now if you don't have touch display you are stuck over here i believe i believe i clicked something but well okay there's a focus point over here is it i can go back uh, i have a full screen view i have no idea where's the uh, focus point over uh, right now i don't know how to go back can I go back? No, I can't. So if your vehicle is not equipped with touch display, well, this is pretty much useless, yeah? Let's say maybe maps, maybe maps will work. Can I use them? I'm not sure what am I doing. I'm not sure if you will be even able to log into your Wi-Fi or, or um, sign into the Google account with just the uh, with the control wheel this single USB port if it was on the side I would be able to install it a little bit higher yeah and my passenger would have a better view but that's not even the main issue yeah you have three ports over here and they are not described well they are but from the other side. So you would have to get out from the vehicle to check the descriptions for the port. So this is, this is also a design fault over here. And although the installation was, was uh, very easy, yeah, all I had to do is stick it to the windscreen. It sticks to the windscreen directly. So there's no base plate that I can uh, disconnect it from. So if for some reason I have to remove this dash cam, reposition it, take it home because I'm in a shady neighbor neighborhood. I want to replace the windscreen. There's no easy way to do this. This is one time use sticker over here. And over here I have a separate different dash cam and you can do this. Yeah, you can take it home, take it uh, home to check the footage, uh, to clean it, to reposition it, to take it outside if you have a, if you want to leave the car open, if you are uh, borrowing to uh, to someone, lending to someone, and with this one, well, you can just stick it once and it will stay like this. <sighs> okay, so this device, in my opinion, is faulty by design. I do not recommend this, but this is just my opinion. But luckily, there's an easy way to fix this situation. Yeah, instead 
of buying this, you can buy Carlink Kit 4.0 adapter, which will uh, which will make the CarPlay in your vehicle wireless, and it will work faster than the uh, wireless CarPlay function uh, over here. And take the uh, rest of the money and buy a separate dash cam like I have over here. You will have a little bit more, more wiring over here. The installation will not be as easy as with this one because uh, over here I've connected to the fuse box, but you will have parking mode, you will have better video quality, you will have uh, this button over here to save footage. You will have a lot of features that are a must have in a dash cam. And when it comes to the Carlink 4.0 adapter, you will also be very happy with how it performs. I have a separate review about uh, the device. Also, there's a discount code. Hope, uh, hope that it still works, both for the Carlink 4.0 and for this device, if you still want to get one of those. Okay, so I can now disconnect this and remove this from my car. Can I? Ah, this tape is too strong. I will have to pry it or heat it up. Okay, so that's it. Uh, check the description below this video for the discount code for the Carlinkit uh, online store. And also you'll find a little bit more of technical specification about this device. If you are interested, check out the Carlinkit 4.0 review. And that's it. See you soon.